Hey Facebookers, Austin Peterson here. As you know, you may have heard recently I've been doing my YouTube uh, live streams over on YouTube lately. Uh, but every once in a while I want to give a little bit of fresh content to my Facebooker because you, you guys are the ones who really watch the most. You're the most engaged audience, so if you're watching this live right now, then you're probably one of the people who listens to me the most, most frequently. Uh, but there's been a lot of uh, topics that have come up recently that I thought deserved a little bit of my piece on them. And I want to give them to you in order. Um, the order is number one, why is Barack Obama a dictator? And uh, I want to talk about that one because I feel like that's, I've ranked everything in order of most importance, least importance. It's Barack Obama, we're going to talk about Gary Johnson, we're going to talk about Hillary Clinton, and then we're going to talk about um, dramatarianism <laughs> is the word. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in, guys. We're going to get the talk started. So I want to relate to you a nice little anecdote that I thought you guys might like. It's one of my true stories from activism, one of my, my earliest, from my early days. And, uh, and this is a story that I think you guys are really going to enjoy because I learned a good lesson about, liber about marketing libertarian ideas. Uh, and I learned the difference between principle and tactics. And just because you use certain tactics doesn't mean that you lose principles. Hey, Lamau. Nice to see you, Tim Held. Welcome to the stream. All right, so the top question is, is, is Barack Obama a dictator? In 2008, I took a job with the Libertarian National Committee. I became the volunteer coordinator for the Libertarian Party, uh, and I was damn good at it. And uh, unfortunately, while I was there, there was a scandal. There's just scandals always in these institutions. There was a scandal like maybe four to eight weeks after I took the job, and my boss at the time quit. And so essentially I had no boss, okay, and it was, it was anarchy, right? I could do whatever I wanted, which was great. It was a tremendous opportunity for me, and I got to help the Libertarian Party, and I got to spread Libertarian ideas, and I did so much great stuff, you know, that, and, you know, stuff that I don't always talk about. Um, but some, uh, you, sometimes you focus on the hits, but you avoid the misses. Well, let me just tell you a brief story about a miss that I had. And uh, the miss was that one day a group of college students came by the Libertarian Party. And the college students were um, there for Barack Obama's inauguration. I mean, so this is fresh. This is the early years of the, um, of the Barack Obama administration. And a group of college students came by, and they wanted to learn about what libertarianism was. Quote, unquote, learn. They wanted to learn about libertarianism. Uh, and so the college professor brought them to the office and I had no idea kind of what was going on and I was still young and sort of naive and I assume the best in people so I'm giving them all the, the tour and you know talking to them about ideas of liberty blah 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 and then I made a big mistake because I could I didn't read my crowd um, <laughs> Laura don't come please don't comment as me Liberty Laura okay thank you um, but here's what happened the um, the students were sitting down and I read to them from the road to serfdom in cartoons. Okay, a group of college students and keep in mind they're all there to see uh, Barack Obama's inauguration. Um, so if if I didn't know it was if I didn't read the crowd right, then you would know that well, by the time I had finished Road to Serfdom, by the time I had finished the cartoon, does everybody know how the Road to Serfdom ends? It ends with the state planning your execution okay so when I look up I will never forget the, the look on their faces I looked up from the book and I could see they were pissed they were angry they were pissed and 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 I was like what I didn't understand why were they so mad why were they so mad and, and I could just feel that the rage and like the professor was sitting back going mm -hmm, like you done messed up buddy and uh, and freaking the first question gets dropped from the students and they go, they go, so you think Barack Obama will be a dictator? And I look at my intern and I look back at them and I realize I had to answer that question and I just go, I just answered as honestly as I could and I said, yes. I mean, these guys were just freaking out and that was, they were just pissed. They were pissed. And so then, uh, they started peppering me with all these questions, and I was like, these are really interesting questions for college students, but it seemed a little beyond, above their head, and I noticed that the professor was kind of goading them on. And so it was this socialist professor who did not like libertarians, and he brought us there to embarrass us, and I had fallen right into the trap. No! I read to them from the road to serfdom and put, them, put myself in a situation where I, I was then on the defensive. And so 
I want to say eight years later, after I still think he's a dictator. Still think he's a dictator. I, and, and I wonder how many of those college students went on eight years later now and are looking back and are thinking about how much they hated me and how much they hated libertarians. And that they probably think, yeah, he was he is a dictator. He is. And that's just a fun little anecdote about about how to read your cat. I should have I should have noted I, I had no idea. I got blindsided. I should have noted that they were there to rip apart libertarianism and they had no idea. Here's an interesting question, just a little side note. So the um, one of the questions that was asked was, well, but isn't prostitution slavery? You want to legalize prostitution. Well, that's slavery. And I was kind of like, mm, I'm not sure about that. No, 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 no. You know, because freedom is slavery to liberals, right? It's if you own your life and you own your body, right? You only own your body if you want to have an abortion. But if you, if, if it's prostitution, oh no, then you don't have bodily autonomy. Sorry, you can't have it both ways. Goo! Yeah. Anyways, so. Uh, yeah, Barack Obama is a dictator, and uh, why? Because of what he's done to our healthcare system, and that has harmed me directly. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that you know. I don't care how many people trots out. Donald Trump trots out and says, uh, "Barack, my my employees are suffering because of uh, Obamacare." And blah 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 blah. You know, you know he's doing it for a political tactic. Well, I'm a freaking victim. I'm a victim. There is a freaking reason why I fight so hard into this in this movement. It's because of what that man has done to us. I think he's a dictator. Anyways, so moving on, the next point, 538, Nate Silver reports Gary Johnson will most likely get 4.9%. 4.9%. Okay, the, this is one of the best polling firms. Not completely 100% accurate, nobody is. Anybody who says they are is a liar or a fool because it, it all comes down to just guesswork. And people criticize me because I, I, if I say if I had to bet my own money, I would say Hillary Clinton's going to win. Well. I would. I would bet my money on that. But Gary Johnson's got another problem. I mean, 4.9% is not what we want. 2% would be progress. But in terms of 4.9%, that would be a major disappointment simply for the fact that it would be so tantalizingly close, as Reason Magazine stated today. Tantalizingly close to the 5% that we want in order to achieve minor party status. What does minor party status get you? Well, not, not much except for your presidential candidate, which as I've been informed by a member of the LN, LNC, shout out to Mar, um, M. Carling. M, thanks so much for the info. Uh, but you do, only the presidential candidate can receive matching funds if you're a minor party. If you're a major party, you receive 25% of the national vote, then you're qualified to have your convention paid for, for the, um, from the taxpayers, you know, like a little bit of theft to fund the party system, the two-party system, which is enslaving us. Anyways, so yeah, so that would be a major disappointment. If Gary gets 4.9%, like I'll still be glad that we grew, but I, I just want the milestone status. And I don't know if taking the funds for the 2020 candidate is the right move. Probably opt from an optic perspective, it's better if the presidential candidate just doesn't do it. Because honestly, I feel like you... You can do it without those matching funds. I feel like you can run a pretty amazing presidential campaign from a third party status without matching funds. And why? Because I freaking did it. Hell yeah, yeah, I freaking did it. Uh, for I think we raised like 120K. I got all over the country and we did amazing things. Got some endorsements. Like, listen, Libertarian Party presidential candidates would have salivated to get have done what I had done in a presidential candidate. And I lost. <laughs> Runner up. Anyways, so um, yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. You know, after the election, we'll analyze it. Of course, I'll still be here because I'm still in the freedom fightings for life, yo. Anyway, so next topic: Hillary Clinton. Um, I don't post pro Hillary articles, by the way. Just so you know, you fr the the alt right trash who follow my live streams, by the way, you freaking idiots don't understand that I don't like either one of well, one of them and you have selective confirmation bias because you ignore the articles that I post bashing Hillary and the memes that I post bashing Hillary but when I when I get all over your uh, your uh, freaking Mussolini when I get all over his case oh you're a shill for Hillary y'all are dumb 
Y'all are dumb. And also, you might want to take a look because you got some bros in your movement over there, all right, with some swastikas flying on their profiles. And like somebody today, we'll be talking about Adam Kokesh. Somebody was saying that Adam Kokesh is a Jew. They don't trust him because he's a Jew. Like it made me feel bad for Adam Kokesh. And I know he gets himself into trouble, but uh, he doesn't deserve that. So anyways, alt-right, people who think I'm shilling for Hillary or whatever you kind of idiots are. I don't know, people who call yourself conservatives, who are anything but. You're not alt-right. You're not conservatives. You're not, okay, if you're conserving anything, it's Jim Crow. How's that? Or the Confederacy. Yes, many of you are. And I know a lot of libertarians get butthurt when I bring that up. But too bad, they were slaveholding. They were slaveholding uh, government, and they were trying to expand slavery to the territory. So, you know, too bad. Uh, anyways. Confederacy, not libertarian. Yeah, some people just seem to not understand that. You know, secession can be a good thing, but it's only a means to an end. And if the end is the suppression of individual liberties, then sorry, no, no, no. 1776 is not like 1860. No. Anyways, so bye bye, y'all. Uh, keeping it real, keeping it real. Um, all right, Hillary Clinton, her emails. So, all right, so just to be perfectly, you know, honest, it's not quite a reopening of the investigation as many have reported. It's not exactly reopening. It's a re-examining. And the semantics matter when you're talking about something like this because when you're at the federal level, a reopening of a case is a big deal. Like it's an actual legal charges will be considered to be brought. And what the hell? What if Hillary wins and then she gets indicted and then she goes to jail? And then what happens? I mean, if, by the way, has anybody found the emails? Because you know what? The NSA has them. The NSA has all of our emails. So there's no missing emails. If they wanted the emails, they just go to the NSA and they get her freaking emails. Okay? Anyways, so Hillary Clinton's in deep, uh, you know what? Um, and the, the it seems like the country is just burning itself down around our ears. And then there's this. Dramatarianism. Hashtag dramatarianism. All right, so you guys, you guys want to hear what I have to say on this? I'm not going to go too much into detail again, but I want to talk about something because, you know, I know Adam gets himself in trouble, and if you know my past with Adam, like we, it's been contentious, but we've also been friendly. You know, I go to, I've been to events with him, and you know, we sit down, and and he and I have been um, cordial to one another, and then in other ways we've been confrontational to, to one another. So I kind of have like a mixed relationship with the guy. Um, and, you know, I like anarcho-capitalists a hell of a lot than I more like, like hardcore statists and social democrats and all this stuff. So I'm always trying to find common ground. But, it, you know, if you haven't caught up on the latest drama or something like that, don't read it. But if you do read it, then, then understand that, like, that, first of all, this is what you get for running for president. You, running for president four years out is a mistake because you get vetted. You're going to get vetted. You finally, you're going on an exploratory tour. You're doing all this kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. That's the rest of Adam's next four years. I feel bad for him because I've done it. And I only did it for like eight months, eight, nine, no, a year. Oh, no. Let's see. So I filed, I filed a year ago today. So I went and then I went to June, June, July, August. All right. So I filed, I did it for about seven or eight months. It's bad. It's bad. Run for president sucks. It sucks. Um, and, you know, stuff like this, the, the thing that really, I guess, bothers me the, the most about it, because, like, I don't wish ill will on people, you know, because, like, I'm, if I did run for president again in four years, which I'm definitely not sure I'm going to do because of this kind of stuff, um, if I did, then the thing that I guess I really think about, the, the, the only selfish thing that I really feel is during the presidential candidate, I, um, during the presidential campaign, I feel like, um, like some of the things, some of the attacks that come are unfair. And then when, when I would get on stage with some of these people, I just felt like some of the candidates that I ran with were really not serious and not credible. And that's disrespectful almost. I, I almost felt disrespected by some of my fellow candidates. Not all of them, there are some really good ones. But when you're on the, when you're on the presidential stage, like you don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about sex scandals, right? Like I don't, we don't wanna be talking about this kind of stuff. So, but in a sense, like, you have to behave yourself. If you're going to be a representative for other people, you want to behave yourself. And don't be selfish because the, it's not a selfish act. Run, running a campaign should not be a selfish act. You've got to do that for, that's for other people. And, and if you're going up there and you're taking up stage time and you've got all these kinds of scandals and stuff like that, we'll have to talk about it. We'll have to. We just will. And I don't like it. You know, I didn't, John McAfee asked me about, you know, pyramids in 2020. Yeah. 
and and like I don't you know diss McAfee for doing it like it's it's a worthwhile you know jab but but the thing is is that we should be talking about the freaking issues we should be talking and so when I had to debate in Florida for example I'll just say it because I have nothing to lose or gain from this one I had to debate Shauna Sterling in Florida in Miami and it was a joke it was a joke like you're supposed we want democracy right we want to have options and things like that but don't run as a joke don't do that that's rude that's rude so if you're gonna do it do it for the right reasons that's what re that's the only thing that I worry about right like I want to talk about the issues I'm so tired of it like this stuff with Hillary and Trump and the sex scandal and like Bill Clinton being accused of racism I hate it I hate it I freaking hate it I want to talk about the Federal Reserve I want to talk about monetary policy I want to talk about foreign policy I want to talk about you know Obama getting us into another war in Yemen I want to talk about freaking free banking I want to talk about the cool stuff the stuff that matters sex is just I mean in some ways Newt Gingrich's attack on Megyn and Kelly the other day when he said um, when he said oh you're fascinated with sex like it was a horrible thing to say in context but the media is fascinated with sex and so are libertarians but I hate these sex scandals Right? And I wish it would just all stop because, and, and yeah, part of that is, I'm gonna get a little closer. Anyways, so, so part of it is defensively, right? Like I didn't like it when people were trying to pry into my personal business. I know that's just part of the game, but um, anyway, so I'm ending this, but uh, I just hate it. So here's the thing, if you're gonna run for president, like clean up your act, right? Act right, do it for the right reasons, take care of the people who are taking care of you. Don't abuse my people, that's for sure. Um, Cause, you know, you gotta treat people right. You gotta treat people right. And, you know, like I said, all that stuff will come out and the people will endlessly gossip and debate about it and shit like that. I hate it. I freaking hate it. I mean, it, it's, it's the kind of thing that's gonna come up. It's gonna come up. So, I mean, good luck, Adam. You got four years, buddy, of this pain and suffering. I don't recommend it. And, um, you know, I look forward to hopefully not seeing you in 2020 uh, because maybe, maybe both of us are just better off being activists and, and going out there and making money and being capitalists. And, you know... If there's a better candidate than me out there, step up, all right? That's what I want. I want somebody to do, I want that cup of wrath to pass from my lips. If I go to that freaking alt podium again and do this again, it will be reluctantly. Trust me. All right, guys. So, love y'all. Um, you guys are the, the best. I'm getting ready to go out uh, to do some Halloween fun tonight. Going to go out to Haunted House. The Haunted Houses of Kansas City are awesome, by the way. Kansas City rocks. If you've never been here, then uh, hit me up. But um, if, the, uh, if you guys are in Kansas City, we'll, we'll do some Haunted Housing. I'm going tonight with some friends. It should be fun. A little bit of spooky spook. But I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, as usual, I will be working this weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. I almost told you. I almost forgot the great news. What am I doing? Like, the whole plug is the point of this, but this is actually really cool. All right, so you guys know that I started up a super pack this summer, right? Loki pack, L-O-K-I. You know, like the, the, the Greek god, he's the, the uh, whatever. People say he's not a god. He's been called a god before. It doesn't matter. All right, so Loki, the Greek god, I'm calling him, of mischief. Um, was incorporated and we just finished the campaign commercial we have to have our, our compliance people look it over but tomorrow morning we will release it very exciting and uh, we've got it done a commercial for Gary I mean who would have thought you could start a super PAC and all of a sudden people give you